For anyone who has ever tried to work out the chords to this 2012 classic, you'll know what a merry dance that pursuit is. I mean, we can play the basic chords easy enough. I'm so encaptured, got me wrapped up in your touch. But the actual chords are far more rich and dense. And anyone here on YouTube who reckons they know what they are is struggling. <laughs> but guess who's got their own YouTube channel? And guess what they reveal in this breakdown? And guess who transcribed it for you? So now we can play it on guitar. Okay, so Disclosure didn't give a rat about how this translates to the guitar. But here's what we're going to do. Grab your capo. Capo on 6, the chords are B flat minor 7. Now, I'm going to ignore the capo and just tell you what fret numbers. Pinky on the 11th fret of the A string, first finger on the 8th fret of the D string. Second chord is an F7 sus flat 13. The way I'm playing this one is first finger on the 13th fret of the E string, pinky or third on the 15th fret of the A string, and then second finger on the 13th fret of the D string. The others open at the 6th fret. The next chord is an E flat add 9 add 11, but it's got no root note until the bass guitar comes in. So we're just going to play it like this. 10th fret on the A string, open D, 8th fret on the G string, open B and E. If you want to put that bass note on there, if you're not playing with a bass player, you can do it there. There's your E flat bass note, 11th fret on the E string. And the final chord. Love that sound. That is a D flat major 7 sus 4, uh, again with no root note. So we've got 14, 15, open, open, just the top four strings on that one. And the reason these chords are so tricky to figure out and sound so rich is because there's lots of close harmony going on in them. So check out this one for example. We've got the G flat note here on the 14th fret, and then we've got the A flat note with the capo there on the D string. So they're like only a tone apart, those two notes. Then we've got a C note here on the 15th fret and a D flat, so they're only a semitone apart. So our whole chord is a very tight little cluster of notes. Wonderful voicing. And the same here, the F7 sus with the flat 13. We've got that same interval, the C with the D flat and an E flat to an F. Very rich. And the same thing with the E flat chord because we've got the G note here with the A flat right next to each other. And then the E flat to the F. Another tight little cluster of notes. So let's loop up the beat from the intro of the original and play these shapes over the top. So those four chords loop for the entire song. This is a great fun song to play in a band. The bass line is really crucial, it's very syncopated. So when that comes in, it's like a drop for the chorus each time, it's wonderful. But the other part that's really fun on guitar is the little pre-chorus section. Now this is actually a great little exercise because each of those eight phrases, those five note phrases, begins after the downbeat. Like the downbeat hits and then we come straight in. Now this is a 12-8 feel if you like. It's one and a two and a three and a four and a. So we're going one and a two and a three and a four and a.
The other thing that makes it a great exercise is that each one of those eight phrases is slightly different. So the first four are almost all identical. There's only one note that changes each time, the fourth note of the phrase. So we go one, two, three, four, five. 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 So the first three notes are always, and the fifth note is always that, but we've got each of those notes as our penultimate note. The fifth phrase starts on a different root note. Instead of starting on the E flat, it starts on the F. I'm using a slide in that one. It's just, it's just how it came out and I like the sound of it. Um, you don't have to do it that way. Then we've got, we've got our, almost the same as our first phrases again. First three notes are the same. The second last phrase is kind of upside down to all the others. It starts on this C note here uh, and goes back down in, in pitch. And the final phrase is that one that really jumps up the octave. But we can still reach it on guitar. So the way I'm playing that is 15 on the D string, 17, 15 on the G string, 18, 20. And that took me the longest to get the hang of. Had to do a lot of reps on that one. Anyway, there you go. A brilliant song, an easy way to play it on the guitar and a cool little exercise as well. Please like, subscribe, check out my Patreon for the tabs to this and any number of other exercises and cool bits and pieces. See you soon.